About 10 months ago, Ford announced that it would soon have access to Tesla superchargers. But in order to do so, its customers would need a NAX to CCS1 adapter. And Ford also announced that they would be offering free adapters to their electric vehicle customers. Now, Ford EV owners were very happy to hear this, me being one of them. But that happiness quickly turned to frustration and even anger from some of the owners over the fact that it took so long to get the adapter. There are some owners that still haven't received their adapter and reserved it back in February or March. So you can understand why some people wouldn't be happy about this. It's unfortunate because it was such a nice thing to do, such a nice offering, but somewhere something went wrong. Either Ford underestimated the amount of people that were going to raise their hand and say, yeah, I want that free adapter, or perhaps their supplier, Tesla, and Tesla is the one that makes the adapter, couldn't produce as many as Ford had expected them to produce. Something went wrong there and something broke down because it's unfortunate that it's taken this long for some people to get their adapter and some people still don't have it. That was compounded by the fact that there was a batch of the adapters that Tesla supplied to Ford that needed to be taken back because they were defective in some way. So that made it even worse. But right around the time that that was announced, that Ford was going to ask some of its customers to send back their adapters and they could mail them a new one, they also announced that in order to alleviate this shortage of adapters, they co-developed an adapter with Lectron, who makes electric vehicle charging adapters. They've done so for years. And at the time, I made a video on this announcing that Ford would be using the Lectron Vortex adapters, what, what they call it. However, I didn't have an important little nugget of information at that time when I made that video, and that was that it wasn't the exact Lectron Vortex adapter. Ford worked with Lectron and they made one small change to it, which I didn't know when I made the video. I knew the next day and I put a little comment in the video saying this isn't exactly the Lectron Vortex, there's a little difference in it. So now Ford has finally started receiving these adapters from Lectron and they shipped me one out. I just received it here today. And what we're gonna do is look at that adapter. We'll talk about the change that they made and then we'll talk about all of the adapters that I have here in front of me, what uh, each one has to offer and the differences in the adapters, why you might want one over the other. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so let me quickly go over what we have here. This is the official Tesla made NAX to CCS1 adapter. This adapter is made by Tesla and it's provided to the automakers. Currently, this is the only adapter that Tesla themselves endorses and says to use on our network. They also say that any adapter that an OEM endorses is okay to be used. And Ford is now endorsing the Ford Electron adapter that they co-engineered. So that one is good for Ford customers to use. And Tesla's okay with that because they're a partner. Okay, so this is the official Tesla adapter. This is the new Ford adapter that's made by Electron that was co-engineered. Now, if you take a look, it looks really similar to the Lectron Vortex adapter, but there are some differences. First of all, take a look at this edge here. It's very squared on the Ford adapter. Now take a look at it on the Lectron adapter. It's more rounded. Okay, so the casing is a little bit different. I wouldn't have expected that, but perhaps something they did inside forced them to make the casing a little bit different. The second thing that I noticed is the CCS locking pin on the top, if you notice, is th thicker. They're both made of metal, but it's thicker than the Electron adapter. I'll see if you could see that there. The Electron's is a little bit thinner metal, so Ford must have said, you know what, uh, we wanna make sure if our customers drop these things and they land on this pin, it doesn't break, so um, make that a little bit thicker. Electron obliged, made it a little bit thicker, but the biggest change is in between the two DC pins, there's an, a tab in there that when you put this connector onto a vehicle, it depresses in, it pushes the tab in. And when you do that, you can no longer unlock 
the NAX connector from this end by pushing in this button on the bottom. This button on the bottom is what releases the NAX connector. That cannot be released while the adapter is attached to the vehicle. So the, the way that you'd have to remove it from the vehicle is you stop charging first. You could either do that from inside the vehicle. Usually you could stop charging your app. You could stop charging or you could depress the uh, button on the Tesla NAX connector and that shuts off charging. So any of those ways will safely shut off charging. And then what you do is you have to remove the connector with the adapter from the vehicle. And then you remove the connector here because while this is tethered to the vehicle, this button is gonna be locked and you cannot remove the NAX connector. And the reason why I think that might be pure speculation on my part because State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I help you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have the installation professionals at Qmerit install it. And by following the link, Qmerit will waive the $200 on-site inspection fee. But in order to have that fee waived, you have to follow the link in the description of my videos. The reason that I believe it happened was when Lectron first started selling their Vortex adapter, the very first batch they had a problem with. And, and this, ad this adapter here actually is from their very first batch. I was one of the first people to get it. As I mentioned earlier, when you have the, your connector tethered to an adapter, you have to depress a lock to unlock it, a, a switch. And that switch automatically turns off charging. So you can't pull this out of the connector while energy is flowing through. As soon as you touch this switch, boom, charging shuts off before you could even pull this thing out. But with the, with the first batch, there was a problem with their contract manufacturer. And they, that this locking mechanism here was not made as strongly as it should be. So watch, I'm not gonna grab this lock. That's not supposed to happen. And uh, if that happens while you're charging, you have a big problem because you're unplugging a connector hot. Don't forget, this is 400 plus volts and high amperage is passing through this. This isn't just a little like household 120 volt socket pulling eight amps. That's a serious problem. So Electron recalled these adapters. They quickly sent out new ones. They made them. They said it was a contract manufacturing problem, not an engineering problem. Their manufacturer wasn't making them to the right specifications, although it was on Lectron to check them before they shipped them out. They must not have had a good quality control system. I actually talked to Lectron's CEO about this. I did a video about it. And then they stayed on top of their contract manufacturer and made it over. And here's one of the... Uh, improved ones you notice the whole connection is even tighter and this thing no way it's not coming out i could pull it all day so it barely comes out when i even use the lock i almost think they like over and then made the inside even tighter but um it works fine so it was safe but i think ford said and again, speculation. You know, they had that manufacturing problem. We don't want a batch sometime in the future to have a manufacturing problem and that to be able to happen. So we're gonna add this little interlocking pin, which it eliminates the problem. Once that pin is pushed in, you're not taking the NAX connector out. It's, it's not being released no matter what you do. I guess it's an added safety measure. Electron continues to sell their, their regular Vortex adapter, and it doesn't have that interlocking pin. So, uh, you know, they're comfortable saying, look, um, you know, we, we don't believe at this point that we need it. Our adapter works fine. You're not getting it. You're not pulling it out uh, without uh, depressing that switch and turning it off. And the A to Z adapter that I have here on the end, um, this also, the A to Z Typhoon Pro, this does not have an interlocking pin either. Uh, and you, you release both the NAX side and the CCS side with this top switch here. It only has one switch. I actually like this design. With one pull, you could release either side. Uh, and I've never found an instance or even had a follower tell me that um, they could pull out either side without depressing this. So the locking mechanism that uh, A to Z uses must be robust enough where you're not getting that thing pulled out. Uh, but again, it can't hurt to have an extra level of safety. And this little interlocking pin that Ford made Lectron add in order to buy their product, I guess is not a bad idea at all. It's, you know, more the more safety, the better. But that said, I'm still comfortable buying the uh, Lectron Vortex adapter and the A to Z Typhoon Pro.
they don't have that interlocking pin, but uh, quite honestly, as long as you uh, use the adapters the way you're supposed to, you're not gonna have any problem with it. I always recommend, you know, before you even try to uh, disconnect the adapter or the connector, make sure charging is stopped. And as I said, you can shut off charging from inside the vehicle. The Tesla superchargers don't let you shut it off at the supercharger. Other uh, DC fast chargers you can. You can press a button on a screen and shut it off. And they're going to be getting NAX connectors soon. The regular DC fast chargers are going to be adding NAX connectors. So you might be using one of these adapters on a charger that's other than a supercharger. And you can shut the charging off on the screen or as I said again if it's a supercharger from this button here you could depress that and it shuts charging off so make sure the charging is completely shut off before you either remove the connector uh, from the back of the adapter or the adapter from the uh, vehicle it's um it's not good for your charge port it's not good for the expensive adapter you just bought. It's not good for the connectors. And if there's arcing in there, if, if, if you do that frequently, you're going to have a problem with either your charge port or you're going to ruin your adapter. So just, you know, just take an extra two seconds to make sure charging is stopped before you start unplugging anything and you're going to be fine. All right, well, that's all I really have to say about the new uh, Ford uh, co-engineered Electron adapter. Hopefully, if you're one of the people uh, that were promised these adapters 10 months ago from Ford, you uh, will be getting one soon. Ford seems to indicate now that they have a second supplier, they're still getting the Tesla adapters from Tesla, but also that now that they're getting them from Electron, they think that really soon everybody that was promised one's going to have one. And uh, I hope that happens because I know uh, it's been frustrating. A lot of my followers, I've gotten a lot of emails and messages from people that are angry that said, you know, this isn't fair. Um, you know, I've seen other people have gotten them months and months ago. I was an early adopter. Why, why, why is it taking so long? And I understand your frustration, but understand Ford has tried to get these things out as fast as they could. They had that one manufacturing problem with the Tesla adapters that they had a, well, they don't call it a recall, but I call it a recall. They had a recall, uh, I don't know, it was 1,500 or 2,000 of them, something like that, because it was a manufacturing defect and they had to send uh, those customers another adapter. Um, so it hasn't been smooth. The whole NAX transition so far with adapters has not gone very smoothly, but um, you know, it's it's a good thing for the industry. I'm glad that we're transitioning to the NAX and uh, you know, give it a little bit of time and uh, everyone's gonna be happy that uh, we finally have coalesced around one standard for North America. Well, that's all I have here today for the Ford adapter update. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.